I absolutely love boas. Boa constrictors, imperators, doomerals, anacondas. I just love boas so much. They're actually the snake that made me really fall in love with animals and reptiles specifically. They weren't my first reptile, not even my first snake, but they were definitely the ones that made me really fall in love with them. And so I just like to talk a lot about boas whenever I get the chance to. Now I did a video a little while ago where I just was showing off some of my boas, all imperators, mostly the morphs, and I have even more than what I listed. So today we're just gonna show off a few of my boas. Now these aren't gonna be the true red tail boas, the boa constrictors, so all the localities and the different subspecies. That'll be a whole other video that I'll do down the road once they get a little bit more size to them so they're a little bit more impressive because we've added a few since uh, in the last couple years and they're still very slow growing because you gotta slow grow boas. And uh, I just wanna show off a few of them. So today, it's almost all boys actually, but to start things off with, we're gonna do what is essentially one of my best animal ambassadors who's being really silly today. And this is, he doesn't actually have a name, we just call him DH. What he is, so he's a boa imperator, all the ones they're doing today, they're all the boa imperators. He is double het for VPIT positive and anery type one. So the VPI is a form of tyrosinase positive albino. So what that means is that it's, there are lots of different proteins that make up the coloration of the skin of a snake. And tyrosinase is one of those. And so what that means is it's a form of albinism that still has that protein tyrosinase in there. And so when you have the visual phenotype of that heterozygous morph, VPIT positive, you get an animal that looks very similar, that looks a little bit different. They're really cool, kind of like a creamish purpley color depending on which form of it is. Um, I showed off one in the previous video, if you wanna check that out. Um, and VPI actually came from and was proven by a great, great couple named the Barkers that live down in Texas. I think they're in Texas. Uh, if I'm wrong, someone correct me on that. Uh, but really great. And this guy actually comes from the Barkers stock. Um, he was purchased from, uh, from the Barkers from Adam Chesla. I think it's Chesla. Um, and I purchased him from an NARBC show a number of years ago. Um, I don't know if I'm ever actually going to breed him or not. He's being silly getting up behind there. Um, because I don't like to do het to het combos. I like to do visual to het. Um, and I don't have any of my other VPI stuff has anery in them. But he has such a great personality. He's very docile, very placid. And so I like to use him as an education ambassador. So that's why I'm probably always going to keep him, maybe not necessarily breed him. If you notice on his coloration, let's see if I can get him a little bit closer to the camera. His coloration is a little bit different. It's a little bit brighter, cleaner, nicer looking than a lot of like say the normal VPIs. And that's because he comes from a very distinct line called Pink Panther, where the Pink Panther is essentially a line. It's almost like, um, like a pastel where it's not a true trait, like an incomplete dominant or recessive trait, but it's kind of a line thing. And so he comes from VPI, or he comes from Pink Panther stock that came from the VPI animals. And so he's a Pink Panther kind of, lineage animal with the VPI and the Annery one. This guy is great and he's actually one of the animals that I like to tell a story about that proves kind of how intelligent these guys are. So for a while while we were working on mite treating um, some rats that we came in that we were going to use to start our own breeding rats when we lived in Denver. Um, we also had some other stuff moving around and all these other crazy things. We had actually their stack which is one of these type of one of these type of cages over here is what he was in and he was you know probably like this one or this one like where it says delta over here um he was probably about that high and he was in one of the spare bedrooms and then in the bathroom in a large tub we had some ducklings just kind of being raised up that we were eventually going to use for snake food um this guy managed to wiggle the tub just far enough to where he could squeeze out from in between the tub because I keep the lids on that you can see for added security and for humidity. Um, he managed to wiggle his way out, push it out just enough, get out, leave the room, go into the bathroom, eat several of the ducklings, and then try to go back in. And when I first came home, because you know, I was still working full time at the time, went back inside and went to check on the ducklings first and I noticed that there were a bunch missing, like five or six missing. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was looking around, like, I don't know, it's really weird. Looking like none of the dogs got out, the bathroom, like the cats weren't even on that floor because they were locked downstairs in the basement because of all the stuff that was going on upstairs with people and a lot of traffic going in and out. 
like, what is going on? And I go into the snake room where these guys, well, one of the rooms, that the room that these guys were in, and I see about, just ignore the iguanas banging around in the background, about this much of him poking out of his own tub. And the only reason why he couldn't is he had went wrapped around, he'd got about up to here, back into the tub, and all of this was just filled with duckling. He had gotten out, gotten to the bathroom, ate the ducklings, went back inside, and I know it sounds terrible, but hey, snakes, right? We all watched The Lion King, and tried to go back into his own tub. He didn't just try to hide, he didn't just try to find somewhere that was warm to settle and digest, he tried to go back into his own place that he felt secure. So, just a really cool story that I love to talk about how amazingly intelligent these animals are. But we're gonna put him away and we're gonna move on to the next one because we were talking about just him and watching him crawl over me for a long time. So we're gonna put him back and then we're gonna bring out the next so, one. So, this beautiful big boy is Church. So Church, he falls into some of the, because he was one of the first animals that I got when I was getting a large amount of them at the same time, which not a good idea. Um, but with that being said, I was still using a lot of like the Roman numerals and I was using a lot of the state parks and the 50 states as well as red versus blue, which is kind of where the 50 state thing came from anyway. So this is Church, obviously named after one of the titular characters of the red versus blue show or series, I guess you could say. Church is a ghost het call. We thought he might have been a super, but we managed to prove that out when he sired our very first boa litter last year. So, what the ghost means is that means that it is a visual recess of the Thannery type 1, and then the incomplete dominant trait, hypo. So when you combine those two, you have the anery animal, the hypo animal, you get a ghost. And then he is het for call albino. We thought he might have been super, which means he is a super hypo, which means that if he was bred to a normal, every single baby would be hypo. And if bred to any other things with morphs, for instance an albino, every single baby would have been sun glow, het, anery. But, didn't happen that way, but all of his babies did pop out very nice. He actually comes from Twisted, uh, Twisted Genetics. Um, a guy named Ron Galindo here in Colorado. Breeds great quality animals, always looks very nice. That's where this guy comes from. Um, just a beautiful, stunning animal. Very Used to be quite a jerk when he was a baby. He didn't want to be messed with. One time he got out and he, would ju he just fought me tooth and nail. He was very scared, very angry little noodle. But since then, he's gotten very good, and I love him to death. He's just such a great, beautiful, amazing animal. And I love that with the hypo, a lot of times with the hypo, you get kind of the aberrant saddles that can kind of happen with the boas. And so with this guy, he absolutely did inherit that trait. Um, and then he, not too many, none of the babies really got this. Um, there were a couple that kind of have a little bit of like the oddball where it almost has like, um, let's see, a little bit like an odd looking one of these. There was nothing too, too crazy or anything that could even be considered even remotely like what some people call jungles and things. But such a great, beautiful animal. I love him to death. I look forward to working with him. Excuse me. I'm looking forward to working with him with more litters down the road. Maybe not necessarily with just Upsilon, who was the mother of that one, but we'll see. But without that being said, put him back, continuing right this along. This boy is Omicron. So the Roman numerals are the Greek letters. That's where we're going with this guy. So Omicron came from a local reptile store up in Denver. And he is a hypo, motley, jungle, poshet, call albino. So you can see the motley has those big, thick bars and big, solid straddles that go down here. The hypo, you can see he's clearly a hypo with that more orange color and the reduction of, how, of the melanin, of how dark it is. And then you can see the kind of distinctive traits of the jungle that has the awesome side pattern, the aberration there. And then this guy has what I like to call the Appa arrow. Some of the boas, usually with Motley, but not all of them, um, they get this really nice looking arrow head that I call the Appa from Avatar, the Appa arrow head stamp that looks really, really cool. He's really finicky about eating sometimes. Sometimes he just like flies right off the handle and other times he's just kind of like, eh, maybe? He's a really silly boy. Um, I don't necessarily, I like to try to get my boas to have distinctive plans because boas as a whole seem to do very well with extended periods of time together. So trying to have a 1.2 ratio for boas isn't necessarily the best way to get the best results for litter size and quality. So because of that, I like to try to just have pairs, which is another half the reason why I want to hold on to DH because I have the one VPIT positive female and then I have the jungle pos head. I might decide to do the 100% hat to the posset 
and then DH to Kilo, which is the actual visual VPI, just to see what I come up with down the road. Because just the, just the, the mail between the two sisters may not be the best if results of, again, for the litter size. So don't necessarily have a plan for him. Maybe I'll put him with um, the one female that I actually bring out next. Um, because I usually tend to favor the call albinos, or I do favor the call albinos, I don't have anything sharp, but in the call strain, I tend to like the corals, because I really like the high pink blushing. But this next girl that I'm gonna bring out to you here, let's see if we can swing around so you guys can kind of get one last better look at him, just kind of how cool the pattern is, even though he doesn't really want to hold still. Um, the next girl that I'm gonna bring out, which I'll probably pair to him, is a different form of call albino that is not the coral that a lot of people may have heard of. This girl is Sunshine. Sunshine is a lipstick line, Sunglow. So the lipstick versus the coral, 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 lipstick versus coral albino in the call strain. The coral is known for the really high pink, a lot of blushings. Lipstick are known for a lot more defined lines. And so when you look at her, you can see that she doesn't really have a lot of that pink blushing. She has a lot more defined lines. So unfortunately with the sun glow, well, not unfortunately, with the sun glow, it really gives a lot of stark distinction of between the oranges of her saddles and the regular just yellow of the call. Really nice snake, very sweet, very slow growing because I grow all my boas. I'd rather have boas for the next 30, 40 years than have one for, you know, eight to 10 that I get litters every year or even every other year. I'd rather have less litters, longer, healthier snake because that's just kind of how I roll. I'm not in it for the money necessarily. I just like to work and share with these animals. Such a cool little snake. I like Sunshine. She came from a guy off of the old Fauna Classifieds um, that I, a lot of people still use. In fact, I even found a, another snake on Fauna Classifieds just this year. But just a really cool snake. She's really sweet. Such a sweetheart, Sunshine. There you go, yes she is. But we're gonna put her back and we're gonna bring out another one. Hopefully he's uh, he's feeling it today. He's fairly temperamental about this. This is Maine. So Maine, again, comes from the Red versus Blue series. So if you ever went anything into, if you ever watched Red versus Blue, Maine is one of like the freelancer characters and he's like the big bad for a few of the seasons. Like he's the big, big bad. And as we learn, um, he's first introdu introduced to as the Meta, which is like this crazy psycho like beast uh, that gets inspired from like the Predator movies, like just a scary, invisible, hulking monster of just an anger-filled uh, character. And eventually we learn that he's one of the freelancers and his code name was originally Maine before he became the Meta. And when we first got Maine here, he was a monster. So Maine, if you haven't quite figured out, He's a little bit different than just a regular call albino. Main here is a moon glow. So what that means is that he is actually a three gene animal where he is visual call, visual anery type one, and hypo. So that is amazing animals. So that means that every baby that he comes out with is gonna be 50% het call, 50% het anery, and then a 50-50 chance of them being hypo. So we're debating about putting him to Delta this year to hopefully get um, sun glow flies uh, to not sun glow hopefully to get hypo motleys that will all be double hats we'll see just because um, I really like the call stuff I don't really work with a whole lot of motley things um, as well as Delta has a just a ton of hats and one of them is the call so who knows maybe we'll luck out he may be a super considering how reduced his pattern was even when he was a baby but we'll just have to see and that is a good way that we'll do that by putting him to Delta then if he does turn out to be super, every single baby will be hypo. And then it's roughly 50-50 with the uh, Motley. I will never be doing any Motley-Motley pairings because as we know, the Super Motley, it does get that melanistic animal, but uh, it's a death gene, so we don't really play with them with the Super Motleys. Um, really cool species of, uh, species, really cool morph of these guys. When they're born, they're actually much more white. And as they get older, they kind of start to yellow out just like, you know, with a lot of the ball pythons or even some of the boas, they will kind of start to brown out from their brighter, either like stark white to brighter orange and things like that with like the hypos and stuff. Eventually they do kind of yellow out. Um, that's why some people prefer the snows. So if you remove the hypo, sometimes that keeps the white color a little bit better. Um, but you know, whatever that may be, 
Main is usually a pretty cool little character. Um, he's actually highlighted in one of the more popular videos on the channel, um, which is the uh, Yin Yang Boas, because while there is a true leucistic boa now, the Fire Diamond or Emperor um, Boas, um, those are very expensive and I don't work with anything fire yet, so the best I got is Main here, but he is still a beautiful animal. And you can see that he's not truly leucistic, he is albino, because you can still see with his, if he ever stays still, he does have those reddish eyes that come from that Kala albino. Last, but certainly not least, this girl, who is going for my face for some reason, is a CA T-positive Sun Glow Boa. This girl is beautiful. So what that means is that she is CA T-positive. So it's that T-positive, it's that tyrosinase positive morph, but it's not true, ne true T-negative like the call is. But this girl is a CA or Central American line. That means it's not compatible with VPI. It's not compatible with the BWCs or the, or the Sharps. CAs are a distinctive line of T-positive. And at this point, there's even a couple other ones um, that I am not even 100% sure if those are compatible or not. But usually we just refer to them as CAs um, that have been around for a little while. Um, and then she's a sun glow, which means so she's a hypo that you can clearly see how beautiful she is. You are being super silly today. Um, it's pretty warm. It's, it's been pretty chilly the last couple days. So I think everybody's just kind of warming up right now. I think that's why everyone's being super squirrely. Um, and I haven't handled them a whole lot the last couple weeks because we've been going in and out of town and making a lot of trips to Denver as well. So they're also probably just a little starved for some attention. Um, but so what that means is, so it's the tyrosinate positive CA sun glow. Now, if you guys have been following along and if you watched the previous video, I introduced this girl's boyfriend, Alpha, that everyone yells at me whenever I do a BOA video and I don't include him, but because he was highlighted last time, he's not gonna be here. Alpha is our IMG Het CA T positive boy, boy, you are so squirrely today. So this girl is going to be one of his girlfriends. The other one that we have that we will introduce later, later is also a visual CA, but a different morph instead of hypo. And so my plan is with him is one year he will be with her, the next year he will be with the other one. Because that way, as I mentioned before, they do better being uh, together for long periods of time to make sure they do all of their stuff correctly and it doesn't work as well as what I have learned from many, many different boa breeders. So keeping a 1.2, unless you're planning on doing alternate years, because it's best to skip several years, at least one for boas versus a lot of like the pythons or colubrids for the health of the animal, is the, probably the best way to go. And now if you do notice though, she has a little bit of scarring right there on her nose. As with a lot of boas, a lot of them have their own individual little stories. So with this girl, when she was, you know, she's a CA, which usually means they're a little bit smaller. Um, I always try to keep them on mice a little bit longer before switching them over to rats, so she's a little bit older. She was in a 41 quart for quite a while when I moved her up to one of these tubs, because that's what she's in right now. She's in one of the 74 quarts. Um, when I first moved her into there, she started to rub a lot. Um, not entirely sure why, that's just what sometimes they do. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, they, they want to move on, they want to be, they want to explore, the space is too small for them. Um, and while I agree with that a good majority of the time, um, she was definitely pretty small uh, comparatively compared to what she was in. It was quite the upgrade, almost twice the size of the tub um, with more height as well. But she was rubbing quite a bit and so she had to be treated for what was the start of an infection. And unfortunately, everything around the face and the mouth is very delicate. Um, and so she will always be not super perfect, but still has amazing, beautiful genetics. This girl is such a sweetheart. She's being super squirrely and silly today, but you can just see how beautiful and almost like modeled her coloration is, where it's just like a bunch of mixes of peaches and pinks and oranges and tans and creams. And it's just such a beautiful little snake. She's so cool. And I can't wait to pair her up with Alpha because um, if you follow me, that means you also probably have heard of Da Vinci Boa. Um, da Vinci Boa was one of the ones who was working with the CAs first, um, or at least very successful and prominent who was working with them. And he has produced uh, CAT positive Sun Glow IMGs before, and they glow. They're almost like an orange purpley color. It's so cool. Like the darks essentially become 
like these like the, the the orange saddles on her which she has a lot of saddles by the way she has, she has quite a few more than what you see typically um they get almost like a purpley hue to them and then the in-betweens just kind of glow bright orange it's such a beautiful looking snake and i love to be able to produce that as well as what will happen when i combine that uh the other morph which half of them if it does go to uh img supposedly the other gene in there can make them very dark anyway although as we've seen with alpha he's already just like pure black anyway but uh hopefully you guys enjoy today's video um don't do a whole lot of these just kind of show off videos or unboxings or every once in a while i like to throw one in there but i just love talking about my boa so much and hopefully you guys did enjoy this video um, I do look forward to eventually doing one for all of the actual true boa constrictors because now I do have several of the different localities and even then some of them have the fun um, little stories as well as it's another opportunity to show off Cupcake, the big Guyana boa as well. So, that being said, love this girl. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have probably enough for another video of, you know, five to seven or so uh, boas that I can do another show off down the road. Um, we actually acquired a small collection of higher-end boas with different things recently. Uh, a lot of them are not uh, very, we'll just call them camera shy. There's uh, stuff that I don't like to show on camera a whole lot, and they're definitely very prone to doing that, just because they weren't really interactive with a whole lot. Um, so we are working on them, so it'll probably be a while before I show them on camera just to avoid, uh, well, we'll just say it, I don't like to show bites on camera. And they're very reactive defensive stakes right now. We have to get them really accustomed, used to being interacted with and handled more than just feeding and cleaning. So again, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you got to enjoy watching these little beautiful little boas just crawl all over me. Um, I think they actually ripped uh, part of the end of one of my dreads out. Um, and hopefully they didn't, it looks like they didn't cause too much destruction behind me, which is good. But, oh, I'm sorry, little girl, I'm sorry. But again, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Uh, stay tuned for all sorts of other fun reptile content. Um, if you can and really love this kind of stuff, um, I'm gonna shameless plug here just a little bit because uh, I need to start be doing that because this is what I'm trying to do full time now. If you would like to help support me, could maybe possibly think about checking out my Patreon. I put it down in the description of this and all of the videos along with links to US Arc, um, you know, the different t-shirts that I wear, where I get them and all sorts of other fun little info down below. Um, all sorts of different levels from just a dollar a month to higher levels that includes merch, discounts on things, um, as well as early access to availability lists when I make them. And in addition to that, a few actual personal one-on-one -on -one online interactions that if you wanted to learn more and just get a lot of more time with specific animals that you've seen on this channel, um, then that is also part of those rewards as well. So again, do not feel obligated to do so, but it does really help me out. It really helps me with this as well as it feeds a lot of these guys with a lot of the Patreon stuff. I used to improve the enclosures and living conditions and the guys, for instance, I just got a bunch of the LED UVA UVB bulbs, which last a lot longer, have great UV output and are very sturdy and amazing things. And I'm going to be planning on getting even more of those with some of that Patreon fund as well as a lot of other really cool things that we're doing to improve their care and husbandry. So thank you for sticking me through that if you were here for that. But again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas for other videos, I do mark them down. I keep in my little snake notebook that I always have, as I mentioned before. So at, if I can, I am working through them. I try to get them as best I can. I do my best to try to have the actual physical animals or at least nice video of them in front of the camera instead of just the pictures that I am forced to do with quite a few videos. So again, thank you so much. Hope everyone's having a great day and we'll check you next time.